You're listening to the Chad HD Show On Demand. Good for you. Now download the KFYO app and listen live weekday afternoons, 5 to 7 p.m. Central. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Good evening, Lubbock, Amarillo, Abilene, Wichita Falls, Midland, Odessa, over in Dallas, Fort Worth, down in Houston, over in El Paso, and anywhere else inside or outside the great state of Texas, wherever you may be listening on this Tuesday evening. Welcome into the Chad HD Show. What a glorious day it's been. It has been just beautiful. The next few days are going to be pretty nice as well, at least uh, here in the Hub City, looking for highs over the next two days in the 70s, the low 70s. How about that for not quite the middle of December, but we're getting closer uh, to, uh, we're working our way uh, towards the middle of December, 72 and 74 on Friday for the high, and then yeah, you got 49 degrees coming in on Saturday. But uh, at least for today, Thursday, and Friday, just beautiful weather uh, just around the entire state of Texas. You gotta love it, enjoy it, uh, because at some point it will get just absolutely frigid cold. It will happen at some point. And maybe not, you know, for Nick and Wisconsin cold, but uh, for Texas cold, it will get there. At some point uh, this winter, we've got so much to talk about here on the program today. The special session, the fourth special session wrapping up today. You didn't miss much. Don't worry. Uh, we'll have Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick joining us coming up at about 535 this evening to share his thoughts on the fourth special session and the uh, failures uh, in the fourth special session. We'll talk about that. Uh, we've also got some other issues that we'll get into with the lieutenant governor coming up at about 535 this evening. We've got national uh, news to get to as well, including Liz Cheney. Oh, it's cute, folks. She thinks she's relevant. Uh, Liz Cheney actually thinking about running for president, which I say, go ahead, Liz. Why not? Go ahead and try running as a, a third party candidate out there. Embarrass yourself. Once again, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, a potential Liz Cheney run for the presidency. And it, as an independent, I guess, a third party run is what she would be, uh, doing, uh, as a, uh, as a, uh, weak need Republican, as a Democrat Republican. Uh, she would be a weak, weak candidate out there. And uh, I don't think she would garner much support at all, even from some of the never Trumpers. I don't think they want Liz Cheney as uh, opposition to uh, uh, to their uh, opposition of Trump. I don't know. There's just something about voting for Liz Cheney that just doesn't feel right. So we've got all of that to get to on the show today. We've got uh, news out of Lubbock to get to, news out of Amarillo and Abilene and Wichita Falls as well on the show today. So a lot of uh, local headlines that are out there, including Lubbock, and uh, that marijuana ordinance that uh, Lubbock citizens will be voting on in the future. So we've got that to get to today on the show. We've also uh, have uh, some different uh, uh, different news that we can talk about uh, as well. So it's going to be a busy show today. A lot to get into. Uh, I want to hear from you on a variety of topics today. You can text in at eight zero six six eight zero. Two seven nine zero. That's eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. Today is also, uh, and, and this one, uh, there, there's a couple of different national days. One is uh, International Ninja Day, which uh, again, I'm not sure where you could go with that, but it's International Ninja Day. Today is also National Repeal Day. That's right, National Repeal Day. The uh, the uh, end of prohibition, and uh, when, uh, on uh, December fifth, 
So uh, we celebrate that today, and uh, we ask you uh, quite simply, and we could ask you just uh, favorite adult beverage overall, and I guess you could weigh in with that if you wanted to, but we're going to stick with some of our favorites. Your favorite bourbon, your favorite whiskey, favorite scotch, maybe a favorite rye that you have out there. What is it? Let us know on the text line, 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. I'll give uh, some of mine uh, as well, some of my uh, favorite uh, bourbons. That I've uh, that I've been having uh, lately, so I'll give give uh, give a little bit of advice that way uh, as the show progresses today. One eight hundred six eight seven zero seven ninety. That's how you can call us. Get in touch, Nick. The first voice you hear from when you dial in today, and like I said, you can text in at eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. Uh, when you do text in, let us know who you are, where you're listening from. We always like to know that whenever you uh, whenever you uh, send in a text. We like to give you a nice uh, nice little shout-out here on the program. Uh, don't forget, you can listen to the Chad AC Show podcast right after the show, uh, anywhere you get your podcast from. And you can follow me on social media, at Chad AC Radio. That's at Chad AC Radio on social media. If you want to get in touch uh, with us that way, Texas legislature adjourning with uh, private school subsidies undone again. This from the Dallas Morning News. The uh, Texas legislature wrapped up a special session Tuesday with Governor Abbott's top legislative priority, a government, uh, see, they call it a subsidy program, government subsidy program. Uh, you've also heard it called vouchers, education savings accounts. Uh, program for private school tuition undone, didn't happen. For the third time this year, the Texas House stood in the way of passing legislation that would have created education savings accounts, uh, a voucher-like system to allow public funds to flow into private schools. A group of mainly rural Republican House members killed any chance of Abbott's latest push for so-called school choice legislation after they joined Democrats who were in lockstep against the proposal. The Senate initially waited in the wings to see if the House would take up any last-minute action on Tuesday, but an hour after the House adjourned to head home, effectively killing all pending legislation, including the school choice bill and the teacher pay raise bill, the Senate adjourned as well. Lack of action has fanned the flames of internal strife with the state GOP and added fodder to an ongoing feud between the Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and House Speaker Dave Phelan. Question remains whether Abbott will call lawmakers back to Austin for a fifth special session this year. Alternatively, Abbott may fa- uh, might focus on unseating Republican incumbents in the House who voted to kill the legislation. Put off any further effort to pass school choice bill until 2025 after next year's election when the House is inaugurated. To that end, Abbott's already endorsed at least three Republicans who are challenging GOP uh, measures uh, that voted, or House uh, lawmakers who voted against the uh, education savings accounts. Several House Republicans who voted to kill the proposal have announced they're not even seeking re-election. Abbott's office did not return a message seeking comment on the session's end. What Patrick, or excuse me, Abbott, uh, he was uh, definitely, definitely uh, on the uh, the lookout uh, for this and uh, knew that uh, what was going to happen. Uh, Patrick said uh, last week on uh, 660 a.m. in Dallas, uh, quote, we will not quit when uh, we will do everything we can to pass uh, this to the next time we get the opportunity, talking about school choice legislation. This has been something that has been a priority for Republicans, a priority for conservatives for years now, and they're no closer. Republicans are no closer to passing this in the uh, Texas House. The Texas Senate has passed the measure over and over and over and over again, but not in the Texas House. Lawmakers uh, just can't get the uh, the numbers uh, on the Republican side. Forget about Democrats. Democrats are going to vote against it. They can't even get enough Republicans to vote for this bill. So that has been an issue, and it's an issue that uh, Governor Abbott is, if he doesn't get his way and if he doesn't get 
uh, a wholesale change on lawmakers in the rural areas, he's going to have to uh, come up with a way to, I guess, sweet talk some of these folks into uh, into uh, voting his way. Because right now, he hasn't been able to. He has not been able to move the needle at all when it comes to school choice. 806-680-2790. You can send in your thoughts on the text line when we come back. Your phone calls, your text messages, and more. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock. News Talk 940 in Amarillo. News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene. And in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Wednesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show, debate day, everybody. We know that there'll be a handful up on that stage. We'll break down where they stand in the polls going into this and whether they can actually move the needle. Plus the latest on Trump as the biggest dictator threat in the history of the United States. People are nervous. What are they doing that for? We'll break it all down for you. It'll be the Clay and Buck Show coming. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, tomorrow morning at 11. All natural Milex from media outlet for election 2024. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO and KFYO.com. Chad HD Show. Appreciate you uh, tuning in today. You can uh, send in your thoughts on the text line 806 680 2790 today. National Repeal Day. A, a few texts coming in. Uh, your favorite uh, bourbons, your favorite whiskey, scotch, rice. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about today. That's. That's your nice little running topic right there. Maybe, maybe if you have a favorite uh, Prohibition era cocktail, we can talk about that as well. A uh, texture: Old Carter American Bourbon, Old Carter Rye. A uh, another uh, texture: Yellow Rose Bourbon. A uh, texture: uh, Evan Williams Bourbon goes really great with just about any cigar. And from Michael, thank you, Michael. Chad, what is the difference between bourbon and whiskey? Well, that's a great question. That's uh, now. Uh, let's see, Nick. Do you know the difference between the uh, between the two? No. Bourbon is a type of whiskey. Okay. However. There are different distinctions. In order to be classified as a delicious bourbon, or just bourbon, the whiskey must be made from at least, what is it, 51% corn. And made here in the United States. So bourbon is a type of whiskey. That's why you see a lot of whiskeys out there, but then you have bourbon which is a type of whiskey, but they're not all the same. There's also uh, some other differences. Bourbon has to be uh, aged in uh, new charred American white oak barrels, and it has to come out to at least 80 proof in order to be considered a bourbon. So those are just some of the differences between the two. So there you have that. Good question. A another text uh, coming in on the uh, favorite uh, favorite drink. 
or our favorite uh, whiskey. Uh, let's see, on the app chat, uh, this from David weighed in. Anything High West? I'm a big fan of High West is delicious. Have not had anything bad that High West has put out. Very good. 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick scheduled to join the show coming up at about 535 this evening. Looking forward to that conversation. Liz Cheney making some news today. Oh, Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney revealing that she's considering a third-party presidential bid. Former Republican Wyoming rep uh, Liz Cheney, who got her butt kicked in her primary, said she's contemplating a third-party presidential run, because why not? Warning of the dangers that would come from former President Donald Trump serving as president next year for a second term. I'm telling you right now, the more Liz Cheney speaks, is, it, is there anyone else out there, the more that Liz Cheney speaks, the more you just can't wait to vote for Donald Trump? Like there's just something, I don't know what it is about Liz Cheney, but the more she speaks out, the more things that she says, oh, the more you just go, yeah, I can't wait to elect Trump. <laughs> She's not doing herself any favors. She might actually, I think she is help, helping Trump. I really do. I think, I think that she's rallying support behind, uh, behind Trump. Speaking to the Washington Post Monday while promoting her new book, Oath and Honor, a memoir and warning, Cheney said that uh, she uh, would not have thought about a third-party run several years ago. It feels former president's presidential bid threatens democracy. Quote, I happen to think democracy is at risk at home. Obviously, as a result of Donald Trump's continued grip on the Republican Party, I think democracy is at risk intentionally as well, Cheney said. Cheney wants a rising star in the Republican Party before becoming one of Trump's most outspoken GOP critics said she would make a final decision within the next few months. See, here's the problem, Liz. You're talking about Donald Trump winning a primary election and then a presidential election. And that he's already a dictator, that he's going to bring down democracy. It's you who wants to prevent people from voting for Trump. You're the one trying to stop the popular vote within the Republican Party. If anyone's acting like a little tyrant, it's you. It's you. It's the Democrat Party. It's Joe. You're all a bunch of little tyrants. You don't get your way, so you want to prevent people from getting who they want. And you're using the excuse, oh, he's a threat to democracy. You're the one who right now is running around like a little tyrant because you didn't get your way. You didn't get your way. She wanted to be president. That's what she wanted. She wanted to be the gatekeeper. To the Republican Party, she wanted to be the one who would decide who is Republican enough, good enough. She wants to be the president. A book promotion, that's why she's running. She doesn't have to run in order to promote her book. She can go on CNN every single day and bash Donald Trump, and she would get uh, probably more promotion of her book. She can go on MSNBC every single day and uh, promote her book, and it would be better than her running for president. There's other ways of promoting a book. Liz Cheney, she, she lives just like Mitt Romney. She lives in this alternative reality. She lives in her own little bubble to where she thinks she means something to a lot of people, and she doesn't. Even if Donald Trump, if Donald Trump had decided that he wasn't going to run it, there was no way Liz Cheney was going to win the presidency at any point. The Democrats right now, they kind of like Liz Cheney because she's anti-Trump. 
If Trump wasn't around and she announced, I'm Liz Cheney, I'm running for president, that last name, Cheney, what do you think the Democrats would do? They would tear her apart. They would rip her apart if she were to run for president. Well, because she's anti-Trump, they're gonna, they're, they're not gonna tear her apart. Because she has no chance of winning, she, she, they're not gonna go after her, they're not gonna rip her apart, they're not, she's still the best friend of CNN and MSNBC because she's so anti-Trump. Just like Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was a horrible, terrible, almost Hitler-like figure in the Republican Party. That is until he turned against Trump. And now all of a sudden he's a good guy. He's absolutely fantastic. He's he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He's a quote unquote true leader and a statesman in the Republican Party. That's what you hear from CNN and MSNBC. Now, when he was running against Barack Obama, he was a racist, a bigot, homophobe. He was horrible, horrible, horrible human being who kept a uh, a, a binder full of women. Just in case he was ever going to hire a woman, he had a binder full of them. He was a terrible person. Now, well, he doesn't like Trump, so he's a great guy. Amazing how that works. Chad Easty Show. We'll be right back. Chad Easty's Spotlight on Texas Business every Wednesday afternoon from 5 to 7 p.m. Brought to you by Texas Mutual Insurance. Texas safe, Texas strong. I'm Ryan Seacrest. First responders are people who stand for a greater purpose. They will be there for you when nobody else is, to help you, your family, your community. This is their selfless promise. This is their sworn duty, to protect, to serve, to help. When you call 911, first responders show up now. Let's show up for the people who show up for us every day and every night. Go to firstrcf.org and make a difference today. Diane from Michigan, a disabled senior citizen trying to get by. Henry from Florida, a veteran fighting to make ends meet. Elena from Arizona, a mother struggling to feed her daughter. Hi, I'm Connie Britton, and I support Feeding America because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year, like Diane, Henry, and Elena. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. News sponsored by Smokers Haven. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. You're listening to the Chad Hasty Show. Welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. Whether you're listening in Lubbock or Amarillo, Wichita Falls, Abilene, we welcome you in uh, all those places and beyond. We welcome you into the show. We've got some uh, headlines we'll get to uh, in uh, some of those respective cities here in just a little bit. But before we do that, it's a pleasure to bring on our next guest, the uh, Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Texas, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Welcome back to the Chad Easty Show. How are you today? Hey, Chad. Good afternoon. Good to be with you. Yeah, great to be with you uh, as well. Well, we wrapped up another special session, and it it uh, it, it appears not everybody is happy uh, with the way things uh, finished out this special session, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, well... We sure aren't happy, Chad, uh, in the Senate. Uh, the House uh, had six days left in session from last Friday uh, until tomorrow when the official end would be, and they did absolutely nothing. So they didn't pass Senate Bill 2, the teacher pay. They didn't pass uh, Senate Bill 1, the school choice, as you know. We sent them a bill to add $800 million for school security. They didn't pass that. And we sent a bill because we are being sued by six different people on the process of the election on the constitutional amendments that if we don't win in court, um, everything from property tax relief to teacher retirement checks 
every other amendment that the people overwhelmingly passed in Texas could be held up for months, a year or more. And we passed Bill Bill 6 that would have changed the law so that no matter what the court did, that these constitutional amendment votes would be honored now and go into effect because those property tax cuts come now, teacher retirement uh, checks, teach, retired teacher 75 and over would be getting a check for 7500 So Dade uh, complained last week that he didn't have time. Well, the session's 30 days, Chad. Yeah. Six days out of 30 is 20% of the session. He had plenty of time to pass a bill. And today, one House member, Steve Allison of San Antonio, <laughs> tried to bring up uh, the bill to protect the uh, constitutional amendments uh, from being held up in the courts, and the Speaker ref- refused to recognize him. So they did absolutely nothing. And uh, and I said today that uh, I usually don't get involved in House races, uh, but this is a serious uh, serious situation. We have a speaker who's totally incompetent. We have this dysfun- dysfunctional uh, House, and uh, that's the one question that every Republican voter should vote should ask in the primary of any House candidate: Are you going to vote for uh, Dave Phelan to be Speaker again next session? And then if they say yes, then they then those voters need to make up their mind: Do they want to send that representative back or not? Let, let me ask you this: the, because the the Legislation that was, it was almost an emergency piece of legislation. It wasn't part of the governor's uh, call. And that was, like you said, because of these lawsuits uh, that have been filed, that uh, some of the constitutional amendments uh, that were passed may not go into effect if the state loses in court. It was such a an emergency for the Texas Senate that it was, the bill was handwritten, was it not? I mean, lawmakers had to rush to get this done. Why, I mean, did you hear anything from the House at all as to why they couldn't come in on a Saturday uh, and, and, and get something done on this? Uh, no, and this makes absolutely no sense, uh, Chad. And my, you know, people, you know, the press was there. I had a press conference there, and the media said, well, you know, both of you need to stop the, you know, back and forth. I said, look, the Senate is not the issue. We are not the problem. We are counterpunchers. If he's going to attack, we're going to respond. We're not going to let these lies stand on it, you know, on their own. And, you know, on Friday, there's three things you can do, Pat, at the end of a session, I mean, at the end of a day. You can adjourn for the day, means you come back another day. You can um, you can uh, recess, means you go to the next day. Or you can stand at ease, means you can come back at any moment. On Friday, he stood at ease. So they could have come back on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or today, and they did have uh, members there today. I don't know how many, but they had a lot of members there today, and he refused to take any action. And again, um, we may prevail in court because this lawsuit, we just learned about, you know, very recently, uh, it was revealed to us by the Secretary of State, Jane Nelson. So we were looking at how we could fix it. And here's the bottom line, Chad, without being too complicated, Right now, if if an election is challenged, let's let's say you and I are running against each other, and someone from your side or my side challenges the results, there's in law an expedited court schedule. You, you know, we can't wait six months for a, for a court to rule on a, an election or a year. Uh, it'd be total chaos. But we didn't have that in the law for constitutional amendments because until 2021. We never, we never had anyone that I recall uh, ever sue the state that the election was not properly held. And so in 21, there was a, a constitutional amendment uh, dealing with a county issue that still has never been addressed by the courts. It's two years later. So this session, we took an action and we said, if the court has first court has 45 days to act, the next court has 180 days to act, and the next court has another 180 days. But that was a time-sensitive issue. Now, these these constitutional amendments on property taxes, which would cut people's school taxes right now by 40% for this current tax bill, and the retired teachers getting their COLA and their checks, well, these are very time-sensitive. So we, what we need to do is first court has to 50 days to make a decision, and, the, and the, then the appeals court and the Supreme Court has 30 days. So the most it could go is about 
two months. Yeah. And that's the bill we passed uh, Friday. You know, we, we scrambled and, and did it. It passed 23 to 1 and uh, of our senators who were there. And then the House, <laughs> they decide, uh, they fail in the speaker, uh, decides that, uh, it's, you know, we don't need to do this today. And let me tell you what, if, and it's, it, look, it, whether or not we win in court in a few weeks so that these amendments can be activated, <laughs> the fact that he's taking a risk and a chance um, with 5 million homeowners and 350,000 retired teachers is usable. As I said today, I said, look, I've just gotten over pneumonia. And my doctor said, you know, I'm fine. You know, I'm totally, my health is great. Well, I wouldn't drop my life insurance tomorrow because he told me it's great today. <laughs> I mean, our bill is an insurance policy in case we don't win this first round in court. Right. And it's irresponsible for Dave to put Dave to put Dave Fail and the speaker to put everyone at risk. He's got to go. He's just, he, you know, he killed. So I, I listed Dave, uh, Chad today the, day, the bill that he killed, <laughs> making voter fraud. He reduced it from a felony to a third degree misdemeanor. He wouldn't fix it this year. He fixed it, but he watered it down, so basically it did nothing. Uh, we had a bill that said drag queens shouldn't be able to do story hour in libraries. He killed that bill. We had a bill to put the Ten Commandments back in our schools. He killed that bill to stop taxpayer-funded lobbying. killed that bill. I could go on and on and on. And, and these are conservative legislation that the Republicans of Texas have sent us here to pass. Most of his members would pass them, but they would never give it, never give it a chance. Uh, Governor, do you do you have time to to go on hold and then come back with us? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take the break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick right here on the Chad HD Show. Every time I look. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Wednesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show, debate day, everybody. We know that there'll be a handful up on that stage. We'll break down where they stand in the polls going into this and whether they can actually move the needle. Plus the latest on Trump as the biggest dictator threat in the history of the United States. People are nervous. What are they doing that for? We'll break it all down for you. It'll be the Clay and Buck Show coming. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Tomorrow morning at 11. This message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Veterans, have you downloaded the VA Health and Benefits mobile app? It makes it easy to manage your health care and benefits. In a newer feature, the app lets you review your VA prescriptions. Download the app on your iPhone or the Google App Store or wherever you get your mobile apps. That's the VA Health and Benefits mobile app. Helping you. All right, back on the Chad HD Show. We're visiting with the Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick here on the Chad HD Show. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, once again, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I, I, I want to ask you uh, about uh, one, do you think there will be another special session? Would you encourage the governor to call lawmakers back, or does this now move to primary season? Uh, I think it moves the primary season, but it's up to the governor. Look, we have been in session all year, yeah. uh, literally, you know, through through May, the regular session. And we had a special in June, July, August. We prepared. The Senate was preparing for the trial. I had the trial in September that I was presiding over. That took a tremendous amount of work. We read hundreds and hundreds of pages to prepare, uh, looking at impeachment trials from the past and all over the country to do our job. And then we had a session in on school choice uh, in October, and now this session ended today, a day early. Uh, so that's up to the governor. If he calls us back, we're ready. My recommendation to the governor, I tweeted this out a few weeks ago, if the House did pass school choice, uh, then call us back on February 5th, 30 days before the election, to put pressure on these members. You know, I, I want to underscore this uh, again, Chad. On Friday, the Speaker, Speaker Dade Phelan, complained that, you know, we waited until, you know, Friday to, uh, to pass the school security bill. Uh, we had six days left. I mean, we'd gotten it a, f- a few days earlier than that from them. We we rewrote the bill. Um, today, He, I mean, he says, you know, we don't have time. Six days. They had all day Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and today. He chose he chose to do nothing. Well, why why do you so, think that is? And why do you why why would he just give up? Here here's my speculation. It's only speculation, but it's based on some 
pretty good information. Uh, look, it takes 76 votes to become the speaker. There are 150 members. And, and unfortunately, um, you know, in Washington, the great best example is when Nancy Pelosi got elected, well, it was only Democrats elected. Her. And when, you know, our current Republican, you know, rotating wheel this way, that was only Republicans. Now, Democrats could get involved on the floor in the final vote, uh, either way or Democrats, but you get that base together. Well, in the Texas House, we have 85 Republicans. They ought to just have, you know, you know, pick a speaker when you get 76 Republicans that's your speaker but but no one's done this uh, you always have a Republican running who gets about 45 or 50 Republicans and then they go get however many Democrats they need and they promise them chairmanships and and etc cetera, etc cetera. well they exist on the strength of about 25 Democrats who voted for him to be speaker <laughs> they don't like school choice <laughs> those the, the Democrats don't like a lot of the bills that he blocks that's why he blocks them but but even he, knows that the Democrats wanted to, to vote this insurance bill, I call it an insurance bill, to, to protect these amendments from going into action now because they, you know, they support retired teachers. They want the property tax cut. Uh, they support school security. So they wanted to pass these bills. But the thinking is, Chad, is that he's afraid if he brings everybody in to have a session, any member can stand up and they call it call the chair. In other words, have a vote to remove him from chair. So that's one theory. Um, the second is he just likes to he just likes to fight, look tough, look like a conservative, but he's not. Uh, he's he's a borderline Democrat, and so so he just wants to blame it blame it on us, blame it on the Senate, blame it on the governor, whatever it is. And it's just nonsense. Again, he's had these bills for six days. It took us. I came in last Friday. We wrote this bill. It took us less than three hours to pass it out, almost unanimously, unanimously, twenty three to one. So this is uh, – they could have done it. Uh, so the only reason is he's afraid that, that – because he's made a lot of people mad. You know, he, he had a, a shoddy, rushed uh, impeachment process that should not have happened. Uh, he, he, he – you know, he's, he put the members on the line on a number of votes, and a lot of the members are unhappy with him, Republican Democrats. And he thought he might get – you know, he might get removed from the chair and be replaced with another speaker. So that's the only thing you can – that or I just want to look like I blame it on everybody else. But everybody sees through this. You can't say we didn't have time to do it when you have six days left. Right. Yeah. But let, let me ask you this. Looking ahead, let, let's say he is reelected as speaker. Do you think in, in the next session, would, would do you could you two work together uh, if he's reelected as speaker? Do you think... Texan, do you think that uh, legislation uh, would be would would be able to get passed if he were speaker again? I mean, is well, is the trust yeah. gone basically? Well, I think the trust is gone. Remember, uh, Chad, a few weeks ago, the governor was saying he had a deal on school choice uh, with the with the speaker. Well, obviously, he didn't. Uh, the fight on property taxes. You know, the only reason we have the hundred thousand dollar homestead exemption is because I refuse to give in to the speaker. Uh, who wouldn't pass it. I refuse to give in. Um, and so we eventually got that. You have to hold the line. <laughs> but, uh, look, if he gets reelected speaker, this merry-go-round for, for members and conservative legislation just continues to get killed. We're a conservative state. We're a Republican state. <laughs> we need a speaker who's a Republican who will follow the wishes of the, of the, of the voters. So it's not about me and him. And in terms of dealing with him, what's complicated, Chad, is he just is a terrible communicator. Uh, I said this session before May, he had not talked to me in two years since the last session. Ken Paxton told me before the impeachment trial, since he's since Dade was elected the first time in 21 as speaker by the members, he had never returned a phone call to Ken Paxton, never talked to Ken Paxton. Um, and then I talked to a member this year, a senior member of the House, who tried to get a meeting with the Speaker the entire session. This is a senior member of the House. Dade refused to meet with him. No one knows what's going on the, over there. The House is in total uh, disarray. Um, I, and he did I, not communicate. I was and, just and about. By the way, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just about to ask you, we only have about two minutes left, because yeah, I, yeah. I, I remember a time where. Uh, the the big three would have a breakfast yeah. or a lunch or a week a yeah. weekly get together. When was the last? Has that ever happened with the speaker, the current speaker? Uh, it, it it happened. We did it last session. This session, the governor canceled those breakfasts. Now, 
you'd have to ask the governor why, but my speculation is, because uh, I know from my experience, um, uh, nothing much was happening in those breakfasts. I mean, Rick Perry did it. Uh, it goes. There's a long tradition. Every Wednesday morning during session, yeah. the three uh, leaders get together and discuss things. And, and so I don't know why the governor didn't do it this year. Uh, that's, uh, that's him to decide. But um, uh, look, Dade, Dade is simply not a leader. Period. End of story. And uh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He really doesn't know how the system works. He thinks he does. Uh, again, when when someone says, uh, "I can't pass this," the House, the Senate waited until Friday to pass the school security bill. You, you had six days. Yeah. You stood at ease. There, there, there's no rule there that says you can't meet on Saturday or Sunday, right? No, no. In fact, <laughs> we meet on you know at the end of session. We meet on Saturdays and Sundays, and even special sessions. Yeah. You do what you have to do. We're, yeah. we're, yeah, I mean, we've been there all year, and we haven't passed, uh, a, 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 you know, and, and real it's quick. It's your here, job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's our job. Here's the deal, it, it, I, it, plain and simple, in 20 seconds, I hope we have left. Yeah. And, and that is, the way the system works, the House passes the bill to us, we make some changes, uh, we send it back to them, they don't agree with the changes, we go to conference, you work it out. Governor, or thank you. We pass the bill. Yeah. we got to get going. Thank you for your time. Okay, sorry. Anyway, you know how that works. They're not working the system, and we need a new speaker. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media. This is Jerry Reynolds. Join... Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. I think the uh, lieutenant governor may not be a big fan of Speaker Dade Feeling. I'm just throwing that out there. Just, uh, just, just something that I was reading between the lines during that interview, and uh, that's just something that uh, something that we noticed there. Uh, welcome back to the Chad HD Show. Appreciate you being out there. We will have that interview up on the podcast, of course. Uh, the Chad HD Show podcast available anywhere you get your podcast from. And uh, you can download that right after the show. About 30 minutes or so is when it will be delivered right to your phone. And uh, you can subscribe and follow on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Basically anywhere you get your podcast from, you can uh, subscribe and follow. Let's see, uh, some text messages coming in uh, on the app chat. Uh, Eric weighed in on the app chat. Chad, thank you for having the Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick on the show. Does sound like the, the uh, Speaker of the House just gave up on this special session. Why not? Uh, it sounds like he has enough time to get stuff done. Why the delay? And uh, th that's in the, that's in the question that I asked the Lieutenant Governor, and uh, he says CBS. At least his thought is because the uh, Democrats in the House don't want uh, certain pieces of legislation, and uh, he's beholden to uh, too many Democrats. Uh, he's also uh, another uh, theory that was posted uh, that was offered by the Lieutenant Governor is that uh, he's that the uh, Speaker's worried about uh, his speakership being called out uh, and uh, him lo losing. That position, if he brings uh, Republicans and uh, lawmakers together, so uh, listen, I, I don't know. I, I just the the excuse that we didn't have enough time. It is it's hard to use that excuse when lawmakers have been in session. I think two hundred and four. Did I read that right? Two hundred forty eight days out of this year. 
which is far more than they've ever spent in session. 246 days, pardon me. The legislature has been in session 246 days. More than any other year since Texas became a state in 1845. Lawmakers receive a daily per diem of $221 for what is supposed to be a part-time job. Most have full-time occupations back home. That's from the Texas Tribune. And I listen, I get it. I get it. For a lot of lawmakers, I get it. It stinks. This year was not very fun. But you signed up for it. And for lawmakers who should have been in Austin, for lawmakers who... Uh, should have, it, 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 for the days that you weren't there, you're going to give back the money. For the last few days when the, the, the House was still in session, but nothing was going on, are you going to give back the money? Now that's another question that I have. I, I just, I listen, I, I don't think that the, the, that the uh, Texas Senate is 100% perfect. But the excuse that we just don't have enough time in the Texas House, I, I I don't buy it. And by the way, we have reached out to House Speaker Dade Phelan numerous times to appear on this radio show. And he won't do it. And I think I'm a pretty nice guy. Nick, what do you think? I'm, yeah, fairly, fairly nice. The governor has come on this show. The lieutenant governor obviously comes on this program. Ken Paxton's been on this show. We Just about every single statewide lawmaker has been on this show. Dave Phelan, I think, has shown up once in the entire time I've been on the air. I think he's been on, maybe once. And that was for a brief interview. And we broadcast it from the Capitol. I, I don't get it. I, you know, the lack of communication, that's a big part of it. The lack of communication. And the, the, the idea that, well, we just don't have enough time to get anything done. You still have one full day. You still had a day. And by the way, I I I I don't absolve uh, Abbott from you know from this. I, I think that uh, his leadership has uh, been waning in this. I don't think Abbott has shown a lot of leadership when it comes to trying to get everybody on the same page and convince lawmakers on what to do to to get his agenda passed. I don't think there's been a lot of leadership there from the governor. I think the governor's done a lot of fundraising. I think the governor's done a lot of. Uh, cheerleading. I think the governor has done a lot of, uh, uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of meetings. A lot of campaigning. Let me put it that way. But the governor hasn't been able to bring anybody over to his side that he needs to bring over to his side. And with his potential lawsuits out there, the governor should have been able to pick up the phone, call the, call the speaker of the house and said, you know what? Bring your people back and pass this just in case. The lieutenant governor, he said today during his press conference that uh, the school funding bill, he's fine passing that without school choice being part of it. The House, the House didn't do it. And so, uh, the, you know, the, listen, the, the, and, and by the way, I think it's concerning, too, that uh, the governor canceled these these breakfast uh, meetings that have been tradition, have been something that the big three, it, it, it's not, it, it, listen, they, these are important meetings. And maybe, uh, maybe Patrick's right that the, uh, governor quit doing them because it, they just weren't producing anything. They, they weren't very fruitful meetings. It was a waste of time. That could be it. But it has been tradition where the big three, the governor, lieutenant governor, and the speaker of the house, they all meet. They meet together. They do a breakfast once a week. 
during the session, so that way they can c- kind of get on the same page. They can at least express where their thoughts on different pieces of legislation, and things can happen. Movement can happen behind the, the closed doors. The three can at least talk. And for whatever reason, that was canceled this year. I think that was a mistake. But that goes down to lack of leadership. And I applaud the lieutenant governor. Again, the lieutenant governor is the only one speaking right now. And I appreciate him doing it. I appreciate him. Listen, this this afternoon I reached out to his office and said, hey, can we... We get you on real quick. Just you know, he's happy to do so. I appreciate that. You should appreciate that. He respects the audience enough to say, "Yeah, sure, absolutely, I'm going to come on," and at least give his point of view. It doesn't mean you have to agree, but at least he's coming on. At least he's explaining where he's coming from on this. I don't see the Speaker of the House doing it. I don't see Dade Feeling giving a reason why they can't take uh, six days to pass legislation. Eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. You can uh, call in at one eight hundred six eight seven zero seven ninety. Uh, Texture Rob and Abilene. It's time to do a house cleaning in Austin, starting at the top. Seems like the swamp has invaded Texas government. A another texture. Uh, it <laughs> it burns my rear end. Uh, burns my rear every time you uh, cut a speaker off. You go to commercial. Uh, that can wait. He's done. No one listens to him anyway. Uh, well, a lot of people listen to our commercials. That's why we're on the air. We uh, we want you to do business with our sponsors. Otherwise, we're out of a job, and you don't get to hear from the lieutenant governor at all. So I really don't care that it burns you, that we have to take a break to pay the bills. There are uh, there there are lots of uh, there 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 are radio stations out there that don't have commercials because nobody is spending money with them. And uh, you, you don't have to worry about that, though they also don't get to speak uh, to the lieutenant governor uh, on uh, on their air. So, I mean, that's kind of something to think about. We we have bills to pay. We're popular. We appreciate our sponsors. They need to hear from you. And by the way, at the very end of the show, the top of the hour, that's a clock. That's a, that's a that's a computer that it's running. And guess who understands that? The lieutenant governor, because he's a radio guy. So if he's not burned by it, you probably shouldn't be. Appreciate you being out there, but understand this this, you know, this uh we're we're not in PR here, uh, getting government funding, uh radio. We have bills to pay. We've got fantastic sponsors here on the ship. They have a message for people. In fact, you're about to hear some now. As we go to break, 1-800-687-0790. Let's pay some bills on the Chad HD Show. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock, News Talk 940 in Amarillo, News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene, and in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Wednesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show. Debate day, everybody. We know that there'll be a handful up on that stage. We'll break down where they stand in the polls going into this and whether they can actually move the needle. Plus the latest on Trump as the biggest dictator threat in the history of the United States. People are nervous. What are they doing that for? We'll break it all down for you. It'll be the Clay and Buck Show coming. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Tomorrow morning at 11. News sponsored by the Knot. All right, 
back on the Chad HD Show. Appreciate you being out there. Texting in, sounding off on the issues of the day, 806-680-2790. You can also uh, weigh in on uh, really any of the topics that we've uh, gotten into. We'll get to, uh, obviously, some national headlines and some local uh, headlines that we uh, need to get to as well. Uh, this out of Lubbock, uh, just kind of an update on this one. The Lubbock City Council, Tuesday afternoon, voted on a resolution and order for a special city election on May 4th of 2024 for voters to decide whether or not to decriminalize low-level personal use of marijuana in the Hub City. Of course, that will uh, be on, I believe it'll be on the, uh, the, it's the same election as the uh, municipal election, which Adam Hernandez is running for mayor in Lubbock. The, don't think the two are connected, okay? Don't, uh, you don't, you don't think the two are connected? Of course they are. Adam Hernandez, uh, the, 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 uh, the Democrat activist, uh, running for, uh, city council, running for mayor. And, uh, he was pushing this, uh, decriminalization effort and the, uh, the petition drive. It's very smart. I mean, I listen. I'll give him credit. It was very smart. It did uh, a lot. A lot of people knew exactly what he was doing, and so he's he's got his little base out there. He's he's got his base. Uh, by the way, uh, during citizen comments today in Lubbock, one of the uh, one of the ladies who got up to speak in favor of the uh, petition, she she didn't she refused to give her address. She just didn't want to give her address because one of the things when you get up and speak. Uh, in front of the city council as you give your address and what district you're in and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and she just, she refused to do it. I guess she's afraid the police will be knocking on her door seeing what she's smoking. I guess, I don't know. I mean, why would she be worried about that? But, uh, she, uh, she didn't, she didn't want to give it. So anyway, the, uh, the, the petition effort, it's uh, now going to a vote on, uh, May 4th of 2024, same day as uh, Lubbock coming to spoil elections. So the Democrats will be trying to uh, elect uh, Adam Hernandez. They'll be trying to uh, decriminalize uh, low-level use of uh, marijuana. It's not even decriminalization. It's just they're not going to throw you in jail for it. They're still going to write you a ticket. Uh, and in my opinion, this is still not a legal uh, election and I, I think the city council should uh, be in touch with the AG's office and ask for an official opinion on this. I think I think voters have to be very care- careful. Even those of you who are all in favor of uh, recreational marijuana, this does not allow you to smoke pot. I've heard from so many people who think that this this is an effort to have recreational marijuana in Lubbock. It's not. You will still get fined. You will still get a ticket. You will still, if you don't pay that ticket, go to jail. And again, there is a very good chance, and I've spoken to enough uh, attorneys on this, that I, I don't believe this is a legal process. But it looks like voters will be going to the polls. This is a, uh, uh, I think it's going to be a closer election than what people think. Uh, there's going to be a lot of confusion on this policy. There's going to be uh, a lot of folks who don't know exactly what they're voting for on this. And uh, it's something we're going to cover. We're going to cover a lot of it. And we're going to talk about it. And I'll, I'll tell you this: if I if I had a vote, I don't live in the city of Lubbock. I live I live outside the city limits. But if I lived inside the city, I would be a no vote on this. I just don't believe it's legal. I think th- this this has to be a state uh, a state a, a state decision. 
And on top of that, it probably needs to be a federal decision. But it, uh, it at least has to be done on a state level, not on a local level. 806-680-2790. But if I, uh, if I, if I could vote in this, I'd, I'd be voting against it. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Story out of Amarillo. The uh, headline here from uh, uh, KVII, homeowner kills intruder who kicked in his door. Homeowner shot and killed an intruder who kicked open their door, according to the Amarillo police. Just before midnight Monday, police were called to the 800 block of North Nelson Street for a report of shots fired. When they arrived, officers found a Jose Roberto Gutierrez Torres lying in the driveway of a home. He had been shot. Homicide unit determined Gutierrez Torres tried to break into a home by kicking in the front door. Homeowner said in an act of self-defense, shot him. Homeowner interviewed by homicide detectives before being released. And, uh, hey, you know what? Good that the homeowner had a gun. Good that the homeowner was armed and uh, could react. This is why we say have a gun, have multiple firearms, be armed. You never know what's going to happen. Someone trying to kick in your door, someone tries to go through the back door. There's a lot, there are a lot of crazy, evil people out there. You gotta be able to protect yourself. Uh, a couple of text messages coming in. Uh, you're funny as hell, Chad. Glad I caught that uh, break piece. Another uh, texture. Thanks, Jody. Another uh, texture. Chad, be nice. His butt hurts. That's <laughs> that's, that's 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 true. Uh, today, National Repeal Day. Rick and Lubbock says bourbon. My favorite, uh, my go-to is Woodford Reserve. That's a fantastic drink. Uh, really, anything Buffalo Trace makes is good too. That's uh, that's true. Sometimes a little overpriced, but it's true. It's good. Uh, let's see another uh, texture. Lawrence swayed in Woodford Reserve, but I discovered Austin One Hundred and One. It's a uh, hundred and one proof. Nice. When we come back, your phone calls, your text, and much more on the Chad Eastie Show. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays 5 to 7 p.m. Sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-680. 2790. Today's markets from the Texas Department of Ag. Howdy, neighbors. Texas cattle feeder auctions were up, reporting prices steady at $5 higher. Cattle futures were up, with December live cattle futures up $1.25 to close at $168.50. And January feeder cattle futures up $4.17 to close at $214.70. December cotton futures were up a point, closing at $78.68. December wheat futures were up a penny, closing at $6.57. And December corn was up $0.08 cents to close at $4.68 per bushel. January soybean futures were down a penny, closing at 13.05 per bushel. And December soybean meal futures were up $11.40 to close at 4.33.70 per ton. December class three milk futures were up 16 cents, closing at $16.32. January crude oil futures were down 72 cents to close at 72.32 per barrel. The Dow Jones was down 79 points to close at 36,124. And that's the market roundup from the Texas Department of Agriculture. And on behalf of Commissioner Sid Miller, remember, friends, Texas agriculture matters. Visit MiloInsulation.com. Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Chad Hasty talking the news at the start, middle, and end of your drive home and when news breaks. This is the Chad Hasty Show.
All right, welcome back to the Chad HD Show. Reuters with a story, Biden not sure he would seek re-election if Trump was not running. <laughs> Biden's not sure of anything, uh, really, just, just period. He's not, you know, what's, well, what's today? He's not sure. The uh, U.S. President, Joe Biden, said Tuesday that he may have skipped a re-election bid if he were not facing Donald Trump, adding the Republican posed a unique threat to the country. Quote, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running, Biden said at a fundraising event outside of Boston. We cannot let him win. Then he went, where am I? Yeah, Barack. Biden's remarks come even as staunch Democrat voters have expressed concerns about his age. Turned 81 years old last month, President's aides increasingly think Trump will cement his status as a frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination in coming weeks, according to two Democrats. Uh, during his 2020 presidential campaign, Biden often mentioned that his decision to run was in part uh, due to then-President Trump's handling of issues, including the 2017 white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, are we going to bring up that again? Is that going to be something that's uh, going to be brought back up? Great. Biden lied about it then. He'll lie about it again. Biden has repeatedly made comments about Trump during a fundraising blitz that started on Tuesday in Boston, said to include at least nine events before the end of the month. Recent polling has shown the Republican frontrunner leading Biden in hypothetical matchups in key swing states on the national level. So I don't think anyone doubts our democracy is at risk again, Biden said earlier on Tuesday. Whether Biden's saying it or Liz Cheney is saying it, it's, they're both wrong. But uh, you know they're they're going to keep they're going to keep going with it. They're going to keep saying it. It's uh, it's not true. Democracy is at risk. The republic is at risk. Not with Trump, but with Joe Biden. That's where it's really at risk. Uh, you young voters are not very enthusiastic about uh, about Joe Biden. They still uh, favor Biden over Trump, but they're not very enthusiastic about this uh, this upcoming election. A poll released today from the Institute of Politics at Harvard's Kennedy School. Reports 49% of likely voters between the ages of 18 and 29 say they will definitely vote in the election for president next year. That's a decrease from those who reported that they would definitely be voting in the last presidential election. But the bad news is fewer young people intend to vote in the election compared to the Biden-Trump 2020 election. The good news is there's still time. We know uh, Gen Z and young millennials want to see, uh, want to see and hear. They want evidence that democracy works, that the government can address our challenges, and that there's a meaningful difference between the two parties. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of conservatives that want to know if there's a difference between the two parties as well. It's not just young people who want to see that there's a difference between the two. The 2020 election had the highest voter turnout of the 21st century, with young voters support delivering Biden to the White House in key swing states. For key states, the 2020 turnout for voters under the age of 30 was 54%, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, an increase from 46% back in uh, 2016. So right now, it's about 49% who say they are likely to vote. And who knows, it may or may not change between now and Election Day. But there aren't a lot of enthusiastic Democrats. The most enthusiastic thing you can say about Joe Biden, if you're a Democrat, is, well, he's not Donald Trump. I think that only gets you so far. I think that you're going to have uh, moderate voters who swing the other way. I think you're going to have more Republicans who turn out to vote. that you're going to have more Republicans who decide, well, maybe I shouldn't be a never-Trumper this go-around. And that's if Trump's the nominee. Again, you know, anything can happen, but it does appear that he is likely going to be the nominee. 
806-680-2790. Hey, another national story before we uh, take our uh, final break. Biden's 2024 challenge, taking down Trump's polling numbers, is from the Wall Street Journal. 2024 campaign appears likely to pit two exceedingly well-known candidates against each other, the incumbent and his predecessor. Polls show that the contest essentially tied the Democrats' chagrin that many voters remember Trump's presidency in positive terms and think he would handle several issues better than Biden. Well, they'd be right on that. Biden issuing a stark reminder of what life could be like if his rival, the Republican challenger, returned to the White House in speeches, fundraising appearances, and on the airwaves, Biden laying out what he says is at stake, painting in a, uh, a picture of what a second Trump term would be, saying his predecessor would gut the Affordable Care Act and act a nationwide ban on abortion and ship jobs overseas if he liked it. See, Democrats, are they're, they're playing the abortion card. Yeah, they're, they're playing the abortion card thinking there's a there was another editorial out today. I want to say it was from the Washington Post. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's some, uh, I think it is from the Washington Post. But anyway, the, the uh, saying that day, Democrats should not count. Yeah, here we go. Abortion cannot save the Democrats in 2024. Because that's what the Democrats are really hanging on to, is that uh, they're going to fire up a, a lot of women. A lot of women, a lot of moderns. They're going to turn the election into a referendum on abortion. That's For the Democrats, that's their best case scenario, they think. Because they can't run on Joe's record. It's been abysmal. They can't run on anything that Biden uh, has done. They can't really run on democracy, quote-unquote, being at risk when they're the ones torching it. So the only thing they can really run on, the only thing they can really get people up in arms about, is abortion. And even that only has, uh, only, only it has its limits. Because Democrats, they really, I don't think they want to get into a national conversation about how they're the ones who are for uh, unlimited abortion at any stage. That's really what Democrats support. Texture says maybe the Chinese pneumonia issue is coming just in time for the 2024 election season. Oh, you know, it would allow Joe to not be on the campaign trail. It would allow Joe to, uh, you know, stay, uh, stay in the basement. It would allow Joe not to be on a debate stage. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, Elizabeth weighing in, saying, hello, Chad, democracy is at risk. The republic is at risk, if not lost already, but not because of Trump and MAGA. It's because of the shenanigans and nefarious activities of the lefties for the last couple of decades, at least. So they are right, but not for the right reasons. I agree with you. There's not a whole lot of difference between traditional Republicans and traditional Democrats. We need statesmen. We don't need uh, more politicians. We don't need more. Uh, we don't need people who align themselves with the majority of either party. We need mavericks. We need people who will stand on principle against all odds, because that's what it's going to take to recover our constitutional republic. Well, you got to be careful with the whole maverick thing, just because when you say maverick, I think of John McCain. Yeah, I think of John McCain when you say maverick. I, I, we need fighters. We need uh, conservatives with a backbone. Who will get in there and fight. We need people like Chip Roy, like Ted Cruz. We need people who will get in there and fight and not back down. That's what we need. That's that's what Republicans want. I think that's what Republican voters want to see. People with a backbone. Willing to throw a punch or two in order to get it done. Because you can, you can be someone who's willing to throw a punch and still be a statesman. You can do that. That, 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 that can happen. 
1-800-636-9090. When we come back, we will begin to wrap up this evening's show. I guess this time you're really Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Coming up on the Wednesday edition of the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton Show, debate day, everybody. We know that there'll be a handful up on that stage. We'll break down where they stand in the polls going into this and whether they can actually move the needle. Plus the latest on Trump as the biggest dictator threat in the history of the United States. People are nervous. What are they doing that for? We'll break it all down for you. It'll be the Clay and Buck Show coming. Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Tomorrow morning at 11. There will be one less birthday party to celebrate today. One less coffee date with a friend today. One less family dinner today. Because there will be one less motorcycle rider on the road today. On average, a motorcyclist is killed on Texas roads every day. When you're behind the wheel, obey the speed limit and be extra careful at intersections. Let's start turning that one less into one more. Please share the road and look twice for motorcycles. There's a life riding on it. A message from TechStot. Bank on better with a... All right, welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. So we begin to uh, wrap things up. Nick, have you ever been to a Red Lobster? Yeah, you've been to Red Lobster? Okay. Did you Have you heard about their endless shrimp promotion that they've had? So Red Lobster decided that uh, they, they wanted to attract more people to Red Lobster. So they did a, I think it was a, what, like $20 endless shrimp. As much shrimp as you want. Come on in and eat as as many little shrimpies as you want. And I don't know if it's fried shrimp or grilled shrimp or all kinds of shrimp. I don't know. I haven't been there uh, to, uh, to get into the uh, all-you-can-eat shrimp. Well... The uh, seafood restaurant chain, Red Lobster, they announced that uh, they have an, they had an eleven million dollar operating loss. <laughs> eleven million dollars, and they credited, or I guess you could say credit, they credited part of the loss to the shrimp. They were spending more money on shrimp than they were actually bringing in, so they've decided to raise the price of the all-you-can-eat shrimp to now $25 to just minimize losses. This is from the Washington Examiner. The $20 endless shrimp offer was intended to win over new customers, and while the strategy worked, it was not as effective as the chain had hoped. They added that customers uh, are more restrained in spending at restaurants, many looking to get the most out of their money while eating out. As a result, the restaurant's endless shrimp offers become more and more popular. <laughs> I guess you, you have somebody go in all day and be like, all right, here we go. Lunch and dinner. Let's take care of this one. It's one of the more iconic promotions for Red Lobster, so we want to keep it on the menu. But, of course, we need to be much more careful uh, regarding what entry, what the entry point is and the price point for what we're offering for this promotion. In other words, they lost a lot of money uh, due to the promotion. I guess it worked, in a way. More and more people are going to Red Lobster because they want some shrimp. They, they just didn't price it the right way. It was so popular. And... Uh, so Red Lobster having to go back and reprice. Hey, you know, five extra bucks, it's not bad. Still get $25. You still go in, get endless shrimp. Now, I wonder, because, again, I have not been to Red Lobster for the promotion here. But I, I wonder, like, is it uh, just, you know, like, if two people get, uh, you know, want the endless shrimp, can they eat from one platter? Is it just $25 for a table? Or is it twenty five dollars per person? You know, what are they? I wonder what they do there, because there had to be some. I mean, here, here's what's had to happen: is that you had somebody go, "Ah, oh, yeah, let me get the twenty dollar all you can eat shrimp," and then the person next to him was like, "I'll take a salad," and they get the salad. Whenever I don't know if they offer salad at Red Lobster, I'm going to assume they do. Uh, but but whenever the waiter's not looking, you know what they're doing? They're they're still in shrimp. 
You got some fried shrimp, bacon wrapped shrimp, whatever it may be. They're going over there with a fork and going, let me have some of that shrimp. That had to be going on. Someone's passing the platter at, uh, at Red Lobster. Had to be happening. 806 680 By the way, the uh, FBI says they are uh, now very, very, very concerned about the uh, potential for uh, attacks, terror attacks in the United States. The FBI chief saying that they're working around the clock to disrupt potential attacks inspired by Hamas. The FBI director warning of an increased threat of terrorism. Europe also very worried about terrorism around Christmas time. Given the steady drumbeat of calls for attacks by foreign terrorist organizations since October 7th, we're working around the clock to identify and disrupt potential attacks by those inspired by Hamas's horrific terrorist attack in Israel. Ray has uh, warned that the heightened threat environment in the U.S. since October, re- reiterating the war has increased an already high threat level. Well, it's certainly higher than it uh, has been in a long Long time. Post October 7th, you've seen a, uh, a, uh, a number of rogue gallery of foreign terrorist organizations calling for terrorist attacks against us. So, the uh, FBI looking out for terrorists. Don't forget, you can listen to the podcast. Available anywhere. You download your podcast from, including the current and cask podcast. Hosted by myself and Matt Martin. You can listen to that. Get a nice whiskey review or two or three, or I think we're on episode uh, 14 now. I don't know. So you can check that out as well, wherever you download podcasts. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll be back with you again tomorrow. Beginning at 5 p.m. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless you all. See you back here tomorrow. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media. Join Moments of Inspiration.